really want to do the scene cutscenes, you know, you can watch the cutscene, but as soon as you've triggered the cutscene and you're done with it, on a replay or a rewatch of the cutscene, they just let you say, press A to skip the cutscene this time. We know you don't want to watch it again. Um, so, yeah, I, I do, I do want, to, want I wanted to point out Persona 4 Golden because it's very unique and I like how they approached it. Uh, I don't think it was in the base Persona 4 game. I think it was added to Golden, uh, which is a really good idea. And, yeah, it's a... Uh, yeah, do you have any examples? No, it's not the same basic, like, because I know, like, it's like in general, if you just let me skip it after you see it the first time, I can't think of any specific examples. Yeah, I can't think of any as well. Um, so, let's just move on. I think, uh, yeah, we'll get halfway done. Uh, recurring cinematics. Mm. So this is a little, this is kind of matched up with unskippable cutscenes. The, yeah, <laughs> Final Fantasy IX. I, I played through a little bit of this game, and every single encounter, I went and I counted how long it takes. 16 seconds of panning around the battlefield and panning over the characters and panning over the monsters. Every time you started a fight with no option to change that. So, in some JRPGs, this wouldn't be as bad, given that you don't necessarily have to grind like mad. Final Fantasy IX is not one of those games. <laughs> <laughs> you have to grind a lot in Final Fantasy IX, whether it be for leveling, whether it be for items, so on and so forth. So, um, you take 16 seconds in isolation, and it's like, eh, whatever. But then do it like a thousand times, and you've wasted how many hours of your life just watching the same 16 seconds over and over again? But the big fucking eight had the same problem. Oh, really? Yeah. I'm probably not as bad as not. I think was there. Yeah, I mean, it's... it's really funny just to get the stupid cards and the stupid draw system. Oh, yeah. Oh, I think I might talk about the draw system. I forget. If you like it, no, like, that's great. I... I was eh, about it. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> 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 Yeah. 
Also, if you ever play the Super Robot Wars games, uh-huh. some of the older games, like, yeah, it's great. And as far as, like, dodging impossible techniques, I think my favorite for Super Robot Wars in particular is if somebody's attack is literally, I summoned a black hole on your face while I dodge across. This guy, bottom down, no, dodge. Oh, okay. Oh, did I not include any good examples because I couldn't think of any? <laughs> <laughs> it just lasts forever. Quick. Thank God. <laughs> I'd like to add on to that before you guys go on. Oh, it again. <laughs> so, a typical good example 10 2 with the dress beer changes. Now, I'm a stupid slut for stupid magical girl crap. So I'm like, this is great! This is so great! I'm gonna make this battle take 40 minutes! So everybody can go through the screen But yeah, you can actually skip through that. A lot of people didn't know at the time. I forgot if they add that later on, but you can turn off the whole magical girl transformation so you can just go and play the game. But anyway, that's yes. like one of the things. Well, now you know you can turn uh, it no, off. I'm just, I'm just gonna keep going on. I think I'm gonna make sure we have like 25 minutes, which is still a good time, but I just want to make sure I get through we'll get all this. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so uh, this one is called Guy Dang It. Um, this is about like this is the shorthand for when you need need a walkthrough guy to do what you want to do in the game, where it's like you want to get 100 percent in the game, but it'd be physically impossible to do without a guide. And to add on to that, especially because if you're younger or you got the games recently, when you're 90s or any time period before, oh, I could just go on the internet. Yeah. Yeah. And certain games may or may not have gotten a guide in America. So you're literally sitting there like, how do I do this? Good luck. What do you mean good luck? Good luck. <laughs> I can't play. Good luck. Good luck. So, Did you know you can draw from this boss to get this summoning? No. Oh well. <laughs> so I think the, the ones I came up with were uh, Final Fantasy X-2 and uh, Dark Souls. With the with some of the side quests. Now, yeah, I mean there are there are some there is something to say regarding Dark Souls, but Ten Two is definitely one where getting a hundred percent is a nightmare. Yeah. Uh, there is like there are things you have to do. You have to press a specific button during the ending cutscene. Uh, it. During during the halfway points of games where you're on the airship, you have to go talk to people in a specific order that is not prompted at all. Uh, also, if you miss it and you don't have a save file from then, or even if you do have a save file from then, you're 10 hours past that point, and it's like, oh, I missed that. Do I want to go back and get the extra 1% because I didn't talk to these people and play through the same 10 hours of the game again while collecting everything else again? Uh, I mean, Final Fantasy X does this too a little bit with the all bed primers, where they're like hidden in places that are not accessible after certain uh, cutscenes or events trigger. Um, and the game's like, well, you didn't do it, so sorry. Like, oh well. Um, probably. Yes. <laughs> So, so Dark Souls is well known as well for being extremely cryptic. Now, for the story, I mean, that is definitely a choice to uh, embed the story within items, within descriptions, within, you know, you having to explore to pay attention to the lore of the game. But there are also characters like Solaire who have their own side quests. Now, uh, Solaire's side quest is very, very convoluted. Uh, and I'd be I, if, if you got through Solaire's side quest without any kind of help, I, I bow down to your power because, good God, I, I don't think I can even describe it accurately because I'm still not entirely sure what his side quest is. But he, <laughs> he turns into, I mean, he definitely, like everybody else, he becomes hollow, and depending on which fans he talked to, he turns into a giant sandworm. But uh, that's, that's Dark Soul 3 fan theories. <laughs> So, I mean, if you pay attention, you might, you might be able to piece it together, but man, is it difficult. So, yeah, I don't... <laughs> I should have included this with the last one, too, but, like... Um, like, in theory, if they give you enough clues in the game where you can reasonably figure it out, that's always great. Um, what, I can't think of any of these. Because, like, the one I'm thinking about for a bad example is Star Wars until the end of time, if anybody played that. So, Star Wars, any game where you could get character endings usually is a, a me in the butt. 
because it's not necessarily obvious. Till the End of Time was really bad because if you had certain combinations of characters, that would basically lock you out of certain character endings. Mm -hmm. So basically you have to replay the game multiple times or else you're not, no. Um, Chrono Cross was really bad because there's so many characters and it's, no. <laughs> just those windows of opportunity to get certain characters, it's ridiculous, but anyway. Yeah, Trails in the Sky 4 is actually, 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 Trails in the Sky 4 you still have to find the NPC, but at least they're going to be labeled. Yeah, it's part of the nothing. I, yeah, I do want to. I'll, I'll, I'll add that for now, and I do want to try and keep moving along. If if you got comments, please. Uh, well, I, I don't want to like shut you off completely, but just, just keep them in mind because I'd like to add them if you have comments after this. Especially like I want to have them at the end so I can like write them down and so I make make sure they're included for the next time. Oh, here we go, random items. Oh. Uh, <laughs> And that, that sphere there should uh, it should be a hint as to what I'm going to talk about. Mm. Final Fantasy XII and Legend of the Dragon. Oh, yeah. uh, yeah, Persona is Persona. Anyway. <laughs> so Final Fantasy XII has two of these items. Uh, <laughs> oh. Yeah, so there's a, there's a sphere that's, you know, it's a powerful weapon, it's, you know, it's a... It's definitely something you would want to get if you were in a playthrough and you're trying to look for the most powerful stuff. So, you're playing through the game, you're opening chests, and you know, you find a few chests in a few odd areas, and you say, well, I'm going to open these and see what's in them. And, uh, and then you open them, and the game's like, we locked you out of this item. You shouldn't have done that. You shouldn't open those chests. And you're like, what chests? And like, you know the ones. <laughs> you know those four ones. And you're like, alright. And then, uh, you know, if you, if you mess up, or if you don't, if you avoid those chests, then you get to go to a dungeon where there's 16 chests in a room. And if you uh, open a specific chest in that room, you obtain the item. Unless you're wearing a specific other item, that also might, you might not have any indication as to why you need to not be wearing this item to get this. And then uh, in the remaster, I think, of Final Fantasy XII, yeah, they, uh, the, the, I think the game's director was like, Get good, son! Yeah, <laughs> the game's director was actually annoyed that people were complaining about the difficulty of obtaining the spear, so he made an item that was even harder to get. <laughs> get good! Actually, it's really easy to get if you do a certain method. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there is, there, the people do have guides now, I, I, but they needed to develop those guides, which is a failing in and of itself. <laughs> uh, so, it's up on one of the airships you visit in 12. And, oh, by the way, it's invisible. It's in a chest that's <laughs> invisible. There is a 0.01% uh, chance of actually finding the item in this chest. Wow. And you must be wearing the item that you weren't supposed to be wearing in the last game. <laughs> oh to get a chance at that. But I, I, from what I understand, you can do this several times. You can open this chest several times. You don't have to play through the game all over again. But it's still the same sequence over and over again. To, to, to pretend, I couldn't even find a good image for this weapon because I don't, I don't think enough people have cared enough to go find it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, there was, I forget the game's director right now, but yeah, he was, he was just annoyed. That's fine. What? The item was actually invisible. You wouldn't see it Oh my god. Oh, that's even better. Yeah, that's that's so cool. Cool. <laughs> oh, that's right. I've never seen something that's so, like, the director hates you. Stop <laughs> complaining. <laughs> so, so this, is a, this is a less egregious example. The Legend of the Dragoon had this annoying boss called Drake the Bandit, who dropped, had a 30% chance of dropping the Bandit Ring, and you can only beat him once. But you could save Scum and, you know, beat him until you got it. But it was a very annoying fight with a lot of status ailments and effects that you just, you don't, it's not an enjoyable fight, but you have to do it if you want this item this early on in the game. Now, I do think later on there are mobs that drop it at higher rates, but I think if you want it early, you, can, you have to beat this boss, who is very, very annoying. So, I think Final Fantasy XII does, what am I, what? <laughs> Final Fantasy XII does this well, because they have the battle chain system. Now, Ironically, even though I was complaining about it, I do like the battle chain system here, where 
Uh, you, you do have to grind for some items and some materials that you might want to get better uh, items, but there are rules spelled out for how to increase your chances to find these items. And uh, if you battle these specific mobs in these areas, you can chain them together and keep facing the same ones over and over again. And, uh, you know, usually when you do that, you have the same chance of fighting the, the item every time. But this time it's like, well, if you, if you play by our rules this time, we'll give you a better chance of fighting the item up until a cap. And that makes the grind much less intensive for a game that is not, you know, uh, predicated on you needing to find like the best items of all time. It's like you can find these items and we'll make it a little bit easier for you, but you have to do it this specific way, which is I think okay. Yep. Random encounters. So a hallmark of uh, JRPGs, especially. I think nine, ten, and Tales of Destiny are just really, really. Uh, egregious with a lot of these. I, I, I've never liked the concept of wandering around an open field and just happening to get a random encounter. Uh, so, 9 has a high encounter rate combined with that beautiful 16 second unskippable uh, <laughs> battle transition we saw earlier. Uh, and it has a high grind requirement. I'm not, I'm not going to retread the same ground. You do have to grind a lot in Final Fantasy 9. And you do have to kind of work on a theft system where if you want specific items from enemies and bosses, you have to just wing it until you find the right enemies and the right bosses and you get to it just it spirals in on itself and kind of drives you insane sometimes. <laughs> um, ten has some ten problems similar to nine, some high encounter rate, but they also have monster capture, which is unique to Final Fantasy X, where if you want to do the ultimate uh, optional boss in the game, you have to capture ten types of each monster. Also, the game doesn't necessarily tell you when you've reached that cap. It only tells you when you exceed that cap. Also, there is no tracking system uh, that you have on your character to check your progress. Of course, you have to go back to where you're doing all this monster capture from to check your progress manually each time you want to check. Also, there are enemies that only appear in certain sections of the map at very low encounter rates. Also, there are enemies like that guy. Oh my, you can't really see that well, can you? But, um, I mean, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, this, the problem with some of the enemies like these is if you don't have move first items or high enough agility, you, your party can just get confused and start beating the, ha the uh, hell out of each other, <laughs> and then you die, and you're like, well, now I have to try and do that again on purpose <laughs> and not die this time. And that whole time the, the confusion's going on, you just put your controller down, and you're like, okay, I'm just going to watch this happen now. <laughs> Uh, and then Tales of Destiny has a, a enemy called Barbados, where if you grind too much, this end, end boss uh, enemy shows up and kills you <laughs> in a random encounter. What? Uh, he can't be killed. Also, you can't you can't overpower your way through it if you've gotten good at the game. He'll just show up and wipe out your party as like, how dare you grind in this JRPG? Similarly, <laughs> similarly, uh, Persona Three, same thing. Oh, you're grinding? Well, death is literally going to show up to tell you to get up, get out of here. Because if you grind too long in the area, you'll just start getting warning signs. Your triggers are like, man, I don't feel comfortable here. And next thing you know, you have a Grim Reaper popping up and you cannot beat him. Like when, the, when you first got, you, no. P4 has a similar thing. If you grind too much in the same area, like you keep going back, you'll start, your characters, characters start giving you warnings like, man, I don't feel, I don't think we should be here. I don't feel safe. If you open up like the right, like I, of the wrong item box, I believe, like he can pop up and get the fire, and usually you can't beat him unless it's like their umpteenth playthrough. Yeah, I, uh, I realized that we're on slide 41, 49, and 91. And I think oh. I put too much content here. But, uh, <laughs> I, I'm not gonna like try and speed up through 50 panels. Like I think, I think this, 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 the, the style of this panel kind of like you don't need to see all of my complaints. You've heard me complain for an hour straight, but <laughs> I'll keep yeah. going until the end. Uh, Bravely Default, Tales of Symphonia. I think have very good systems. Uh, Bravely Default, you can customize it entirely. You can say I don't want any random encounters, or I want all of the random encounters. 
Um, and I, I like that a lot because the game will stay however difficult it is throughout the entire run. It is up to you to decide whether you want to like speed run it or if you want to like you know go for the extra items and it, it just helps you along to say like you can experience this at the developer intended quote unquote zero percent rate where we don't increase or decrease the chances or you can customize it to make it easier for yourself. This is also a, somewhat of an accessibility thing where uh, the, the more options the developer gives a player, generally the better it is. Um, and then Tales of Symphonia I like uh, as a personal favorite game of mine as well. I do like that the mobs are shown on screen as generic blobs that you uh, can't always avoid, but if you have the right overworld uh, uh, traversal and the right items to repel them, you can't avoid them at that point. And some of them you can outrun, but you also know when they're coming and they don't take you by surprise. And so it's every, every, every time you take five steps, you know, you encounter something else. You bet! <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Extra oh, bosses. <laughs> oh. And I think, I, I do like it, I do love me some extra bosses, but For there are some bad extra bosses. <laughs> Oh no! Yeah. Oh, yeah. Jesus. Get out of here! Get out of here! Fifty-two million HP oh, on a game with a nine thousand nine hundred ninety-nine damage limit Get for your adventures. <laughs> At least an hour long of participation, the boss can heal itself. Oh, no. yeah. Now, none of his attacks will one-shot you, which is fine, but. None of your attacks will do 1% of his health. So you just have to keep chipping away over and over. I Was Final Fantasy XII one of the ones with an auto battle system? Yes. yes. So you just leave it on while you go to school and then come back and put the beat you out with it. Not engaging, not fun. Persona 4 Golden has Margaret. Now, to even get some Margaret, I mean, Persona 4 Golden has its own issues with the ending and how you get the true ending. But to get some Margaret, it's like you have to do all that stuff previously. So, Margaret has this fun little thing where she just decides to kill you if you don't have the right resistances without any wind-up. Usually, I'm a fan of uh, bosses where they have some kind of like wind-up or preparation to be like, you know, to give you some indication that like you're about to get smacked hard. <laughs> like, prepare yourself or you'll die. But Margaret's just like, I uh, checks like the turn clock, and if it's like turn 50 or later, she'll sometimes just decide to do a move that uh, uh, one-hit KOs your entire party, if you don't have the resistances that you may or may not know you need, because you probably haven't fought the boss before. And this is after, like, turn 50 is not early into the game, or early into the fight. This is after a slog. And then you're like, well, I can do all that again, or I can go touch grass. <laughs> 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 So I do think that there are plenty of good examples of extra bosses, obviously, in these games, or in JRPGs. Tales of Symphonia has Abyssion, which is a very fair fight. I mean, Abyssion can be staggered, he can be comboed out, he, uh, he is super strong, um, and the, the, I do like how they build up to the fight where he, he is a scholar that sends you on missions to collect these cursed items. So he can destroy them, but then, haha, he turns out it was, he wanted to use them himself. It is, it is a, an acceptable build-up to an, a, a great end boss fight. It's not just like you can happen upon this. It's like you need to put in the effort to experience this. And if you do beat him, you, I mean, the, the, the end game, the rewards are, you know, debatable. I think some people like them and some people don't. But they can become the most powerful weapons in the game if you put in extra effort with that. And I like that there is an acceptable reward. There is a great build-up to the fight, and the fight itself is also very good. Final Fantasy X has Nemesis and Penance. Mm -hmm. uh, I like these fights, even though the build-up to uh, Nemesis, Nemesis is not great because of the monster capture, because uh, the game gives you the tools to be just as overpowered as the bosses are. Uh, you don't need those tools to beat the final boss in the game, but if you want to beat the end bosses, like the Dark Aeons and Nemesis and Penance, you need to have the overpowered abilities, you need to have the celestial weapons, you need to have damage limit break. And I like that the game encourages, like, builds you up to be, like, just as overpowered as they are. I like that feeling and I like that sense of progression if you put the work into the sphere grid and so on. 
Uh, Dark Souls 3, I mean, Dark Souls yes. is infamous for its optional bosses. Uh, I mean, Nameless King is a lot of people's favorite boss. You don't even need to go near his area. You can totally skip him if you want Dark Souls 3. But he is one of the most fair, most well done, most balanced bosses in the game. He will kill you if you mess up, but it's on you. It's not on, you know, cheap shots. And I really like that. So I'll, I'll speed up a little bit to see how much else I can get through. I'm probably not going to get through the whole thing. Uh, but we do have the issue of backtracking. Oh. Uh, with Tales of the Abyss. Uh, well, a lot of Tales of the Abyss. They're, they're really bad, huh? Yeah, and Final Fantasy. Tales of the Abyss is just a series of like backtracking like throughout the story. It's like, let's just go back to the, all these places that you know we've already seen like a hundred times before. And in fact, they, they just keep going back. But it'll be different this time. Mm -hmm. Now we need to talk to this guy. Yeah. And Final Fantasy X also has a small issue of backtracking where if you miss an item in an area, uh, sometimes you you go back there and you're like, I'm just going to pick that item up real quick, and then there's a Dark Aeon, which is an end game boss that can one hit your entire team if you're not prepared for the fight. And it's like, well, I guess I'm not getting that that like potion or whatever. I guess I'll just get stacked out by Dark Bahamut. <laughs> Oh, this is a fun one. This is a concept my, uh, my friends coined called Steinering. There's probably an official name for it, but I like this term more. Uh, Final Fantasy IX Legend of the Crypt Dragoon do this kind of thing. Plenty of other games do this kind of thing, too. Uh, Steiner is introduced early on with a, uh, a uh, joint attack with the Black Mage of the game, and then he just disappears for a while. Oh my god. So, Tales of Abyss, that's Jade. If you ever play Lunar Eternal Blue, that's literally Lucia. She's basically a goddess. Can you just kill everything? And then it's like, well, no. Now she's like level one now. Like, damn, was winning. You can't win. <laughs> <laughs> and then Steiner, and then like this character also like sometimes they do reintroduce him to the party. Like Steiner, you know, comes back, but he's useless because he hasn't been in your party. He doesn't have better items. He doesn't have the ace experience. Uh, so. <laughs> There's also Legend of the Dragoon, uh, Shauna slash Miranda. She's in the game for like a significant chunk of it, but she's like basically useless like while she's in the game. So it's like you introduced a character that wasn't even useful and you just took her away. Did you realize the mistake like halfway in? Uh, I think Final Fantasy XIII and Symphonia do this better than most. Both basically examples of characters that are taken away from you but return to you with proper levels up and with prop, not necessarily proper items, but they, the game assumes a level you should be at and gives you the character at that level. Mm -hmm. Final Fantasy XIII does it with Snow, or Snow and Tales of Symphonia does it with Rain, Zellos, and Kratos, uh, depending on which route you give them. Oh god, don't do something about it's in the game. <laughs> so... <laughs> Spirit Grid! <laughs> like well, Spirit Grid's fun. I, I, when I first played it, I screwed so badly that I have a friend to help me go through it. I didn't give a shit about the, oh. sorry, I didn't give a crap about the Spirit Grid system at first. This was years ago. It's now I don't care. Like, I mean, whatever. You see those mysterious <laughs> system. <laughs> I, cannot, I cannot stress how useless this system is unless you want to be, like, hyper overpowered. I barely paid attention to this system and I beat the game with no real issues. <laughs> uh, Mysteria makes it a little bit easier, but... It is just atrocious in Zestiria. Uh, Final Fantasy VIII has the junction system. Oh, junction system. Um, so yeah, I'm not going to get too too much into trying to explain these systems because of lack of time. Uh, I do think Seven and Tales of Vesperia have very good, in, simple enough to understand, but also complicated enough to build your own kind of path on. Uh, Final Fantasy has, Seven has materia, uh, you know, Better materials, harder to find, you know, and in Tales of Vesperia, item synthesis exists. You can use your old weapons to improve your new weapons. And uh, yeah, I think I'll just call it here. I mean, I have a few more slides, but it's basically 4.45. Uh, I am running the subtitles panel at 6 o'clock tonight. My group is running, um, I'm doing a panel tomorrow at 1045 about Makoto Shinkai. I'm doing, my, one of my uh, group members is doing a panel at 2.30 tomorrow. And uh, yeah, I'm Justin Cole. I thank you all so much for coming.